Final Fantasy no longer doing exclusives for PlayStation, the official PS5 Pro spec sheet, and PlayStation confirming 55 games that are enhanced for the PS5 Pro. All this in today's video. Please like the video, subscribe to never miss a PlayStation update, and share the video to help grow our community. Now let's talk about this Final Fantasy situation. In an interview with 4Gamer for Fantasia Neo Dimension, Yoshida, known by fans as Yoshi P, has said that Square plans to launch games on all platforms simultaneously more and more. In quotes, of course, we want you to play it a lot on other platforms as well, he said. This time, we will also release the Xbox Series X and S versions at the same time. In the future, Square Enix titles will be released simultaneously on each platform more and more. But since this is close to the first release, we would like Xbox users to play it as well. Now, this is in response in particular to Fantasian, right? Why they're launching it day and date with Xbox, PS5, PC, all these other platforms. And I think not only is this a situation where it makes sense, but also... Uh, you know, it's not one of these big titles that Sony would have even offered exclusive or wanted exclusivity for uh, as far as paying for it. Um, it seems as though that, you know, Square Enix is pretty locked in on no longer doing exclusives with PlayStation or I guess with Nintendo either because they do do exclusives for Nintendo as well. Although some people seem to think it's just PlayStation. No, they do it across the board as far as PlayStation and Nintendo go. Um, so I think they're going to look away from that as far as we know, right? Like what they're telling us is, Hey, we're done with that. We're no longer going to do that more or less. Now, does that mean that we'll never, ever see another PlayStation exclusive as far as they're, they're seeming to let us know? Yeah, that likely is the case. Um, do I think that this will turn the entire ship around? I don't know that that is the case. I know a lot of people like to point fingers at PlayStation exclusivity, but as we have learned, uh, that Silent Hill 2 didn't perform as well, you know, being a multi-platform launch with PC and, and PS5. And also even when Final Fantasy 16 eventually went to PC, the sales were kind of soft there as well. So I'm wondering if Rebirth launching on PC will give us better, like a better result or something. We'll, we'll know for sure when the time comes. But as far as Xbox being a major driver for sales, I don't think that they will be. I don't think that Square Enix will get the sales that they want out of an Xbox launch. I do think that they will experiment there to see for sure what the situation is there. But I think overall, I just this whole idea that Xbox is going to make up the gap to uh, make Square Enix happy as far as what's going on with their with their sales of their games. I don't think that'll do it. You know, Square Enix has some expectations that clearly are uh, beyond what their their games can obtain. Um, which makes me question, are the expectations a little too high or like what's going on there? Um, but I do think that we're in a situation where Square Enix needs to figure out what they're going to do, because if their games are not selling well and they're spending as much time and, and budget on these games, that's a problem for Square Enix and a problem for fans of Final Fantasy and other franchises, right? So I think the best bet is that in the future with the next mainline Final Fantasy. I don't know if they have any contractual ob obligations, but assuming they have no contractual obligations with part three of Final Fantasy VII Remake, I could see them launching PC for sure, uh, PS5, and then Xbox, maybe Xbox. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Square Enix will be able to work something out there. I can't say for sure I could see it being on Xbox just because, well, we, we don't have Remake. We don't have Rebirth on Xbox. So just dropping, you know, the part three or whatever it'll, it'll be called would be kind of out of place. Mind you, they've done that before. They put Kingdom Hearts 3 there. And Kingdom Hearts 3, if you guys remember, was the only the only title on Xbox at the time. So it's not impossible. I just think it's unlikely. But it looks quite clear to me that Xbox is a platform that, that Square Enix wants to launch on. And I do think that they will experiment there. Um, whether they'll get the sales that they want remains to be seen. And we'll see. And I'll definitely report on that. When the time comes moving on we've got the official ps5 pro specs that have come out of the consoles manual and the results are quite interesting so it says that this cpu is a zen 2 8 core 16 thread cpu the gpu is 16.7 teraflops um rdna based graphics engine and uh it seems to be lower than than what we anticipated originally which was 33.5 but with that said i think there's a lot more to this story as well uh, given the AI upscaling and other things that we have going on with this system. Um, way beyond my understanding for sure, so I won't sit here and tell you guys uh, what all this could mean and what it means. What I would rather do is look at tangible evidence and also like like results that we can actually see and also look at the assessment of minds that understand this stuff and can give us more information on this. So we're looking at it from a knowledgeable standpoint rather than just assuming 
or talking, you know, bro talk with, with the tech. That's something I don't want to do here. And a lot of people will be quick to tell you, oh, the teraflops is not that high. It's only 16.7 teraflops, right? So therefore it must not be a big upgrade, right? But I think it doesn't account for obviously AI upscaling and what happens there and all the things that we can get from that. You know, it's easy to compare these numbers to like say the Xbox Series X or the PS5, but we're dealing with what seems to be very different type of tech here. So I feel like there's more to this story than we can necessarily understand just from looking at these numbers here now we have seen the results we have seen the results all over the internet as far as performance of the system goes and the performance is there it's actually quite good um and i think that we'll get a better look once the system is on our hands like once i have it with me i'll be able to know for sure okay is this a substantial jump for me personally number one but number two uh we'll see from other people how this compares to the ps5 compares to series x s and and then obviously PC as well is, is that is a platform that a lot of people are playing on. So naturally you want to know uh, what these comparisons look like. And based on, you know, earlier analysis, we know that the PS5 Pro is actually quite impressive for what it is. And as far as even price tag goes, now people are saying, you know, maybe this isn't as expensive as we thought, right? Maybe this isn't as big a deal as we thought where people were losing their minds because they said, oh, well, it's like this very expensive system and it doesn't feel like it it's worth it and again i'm going to revisit this because i think a lot of people get lost in the conversation of is the ps5 worth 700 dollars? and at the end of the day what it will come down to as always is does it do what you want it to is it going to obtain those levels of fidelity that you want and if the answer is yes then maybe it is worth it for you if the answer is no and you don't care and you're happy with what you have then the answer is keep your platform that you have and just keep playing on there right so it's it's not one of these things where we need to argue about uh, the value. Is it worth it? Because it could differ from person to person, right? And the whole build a PC situation, we're not going to address that because it's just such a silly conversation. But in the same vein of talking about the PS5 Pro, we're going to talk about the 55 games that have been announced to support uh, PS5 Pro enhanced versions. So in total, 55 games will feature graphical enhancements like advanced ray tracing, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, and improved frame rates of 60 hertz or 120 hertz on day one with more to follow these games include first party titles like god of war ragnarok horizon forbidden west spider-man 2 as well as third party games such as call of duty black ops 6 dragon age the veil guard alan wake 2 and star wars outlaws so even new games are being supported here along with older games and not to mention that you're going to be able to to uh, enhance the entire PS4 back catalog. So you're looking at a ton of games, guys. This is not going to just support, you know, your PS5 games and the newer PS5. You know, this is going to support and it's going to enhance even your PS4 back catalog. So if you're playing a PS4 game, it's going to usually result in a better experience on the PS5 uh, than it, the PS5 Pro than it would on a base PS5. So there's a lot of benefit here. Uh, outside of just these PS5 Pro enhanced games. And again, this is a, a time where we have, you know, the PS5 Pro coming up, right? It's coming out on Thursday, you know, a couple days from now. And there's a lot of excitement around it because new hardware always gets a lot of excitement, typically speaking. And a lot of people are, are looking forward to uh, finding out what this thing does and just how impressive it's going to be. And I think we'll be surprised with the results. I do feel like PS5 Pro was really ragged on a lot since its reveal. And the biggest reason for it was its price tag, uh, missing the disk drive and, and the stand being uh, separate from, or the vertical stand being separate from it. And I feel like we, everything got lost in that conversation, whereas we weren't really talking about the tangible results of it. And now that things are coming out, it's looking like a lot more is impressive than we prior would have thought, right? Like things are looking a lot better than we thought prior to, uh, you know, the results that are coming out now. And obviously with Thursday rolling up, I'll have my hands on it. I'll let you guys know what I personally think of it. And we'll talk about it on, on video and camera as well, uh, just to make sure that we're covering everything uh, on the channel here that, you know, personal experiences as well as drawing from other people's experiences. But I really like to, to give you guys personal experiences as well, because, well, that's what some of you guys come here for, right? You want to know what my thoughts and my experiences are with the hardware. With that said, I want you guys to leave your comments for me. Let me know what you want to know about the PS5 Pro. If you have questions, if you want to see something specific, and I will try to accommodate everybody's uh, requests. Uh, as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments about these other topics as well. Square Enix making Final Fantasy a pretty much a, a multi-platform franchise again. And uh, 
the official PlayStation 5 Pro specs, as well as these 55 games. What else would you like to see? And again, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to never miss PlayStation update, share the video to help grow our community. I thank you all for watching. Take care.